And we are live. Welcome everybody to, uh, let's close this thing, to the GMT Games U.S. Civil War by designer Mark Simonich. Hi, Pat. How's it going? Hey, how are you doing, Gary? I'm okay. So let's, uh, I've been boning up on this just a little bit because it's been a while since I've played it. So I, I was have... actually thinking about it. We, we had agreed, you know, and I was kind of in the mood to play the Union, but from a rules teaching standpoint, mm -hmm. it, that might be better for you to do or what do you think because the union kind of goes first that's true we could switch sides all right let's uh let me do that like it only occurred to me like when i was you know exactly boning up on the rules and you know what i'm like hey wait a second you know let me do let me I guess the way to do that is get out of here yeah. no i'm not gonna save it this we out of here so anything. and let me it's not that I have a fascination for playing the Confederates. I'll probably lose pretty quickly since I haven't played it before. But well, that's okay. So for the for the record, Pat and I played um, the Victory Games Civil War, the classic Victory Games Eric Smith Civil War. Should I select 1861 Advanced Game? Is that what I? Should 1861 see? Basic Game is the one basic. I one I picked. Yeah. Is that what you want to do? All right. Yeah. Let me do that. All right. so, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. That's okay. So there, there is, uh, on that topic, uh, there is a basic game and an advanced game. What the advanced game is, is it adds the advanced naval rules, which is the naval rules where you actually have naval units to move around. Otherwise, it's just kind of like a zone control thing that moves around as the game progresses. Um, the... Most of the ambiguities that were present in this game when it came out... Um, were actually due to the advanced naval rules. I don't seem to be able to pick the Union, though, for some reason. Just oh, get you picked out. a different room. Okay, cool. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so... Um, this is a game that, if you've read the designer's notes, was was fairly heavily inspired by the Victory Games Civil War, but also by, and you can see this in the design, I think, also by For the People, um, and to a, a somewhat lesser extent, although Mark Simonich credits uh, Europe engulfed, and presumably Asia engulfed as well, for the special actions mechanic. And essentially, the special actions are these little cards, these little half-sized cards that come with the game that... All they are are different additional actions that you can take in a particular theater. So we have at the top of the map, there's there's a, a command pacing mechanism that is highly reminiscent of the pacing mechanism present in the Victory Games Civil War. But it's different, and it's quite a bit simpler. And I think... Um, that I, I think it does everything that the Victory Game Civil War does without as much overhead. Let me put it that way. There are other things, and I don't want to turn this into U.S. Civil War no. versus Victory Game Civil War. There, there's there are things that I think each of the two games does better, um, and I think most of us will end up agreeing at the end of the day that um, the leaders are the thing that the Victory Games game deals does a lot better. Yeah, I we, we can turn it into that, but not. I don't want to for a bit. I want to play for a while. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Play this, and then, and then you know, possibly in an informed way, we can we can do that. But right now, I'm like just approaching it like it's a new game. So yeah, so okay. we got um, yep, yep, yep. So I see we have action cycle. We've got a dice differential. Uh huh. Very very reminiscent. Yes. And uh, so what it looks like it's doing is yeah. instead of unlike victory games Civil War, instead of pre-programming your command points you just kind of get them via yes the dice but it's randomized too yes yeah and then so you still uh, have that element of uncertainty where you don't know exactly what's going to happen or what you'll have the capability to do right right um so for that. the record and I, I seldom see this mentioned actually uh it's it's fairly apparent now bear in mind that i had played since the last time I played U.S. Civil War, I have played both the Victory Games Civil War and Battle Between the States, or uh, War Between the States from SPI. GDW? SPI. SPI right, yeah, right. and I actually think that, that the Vic Eric Lee Smith 
um, which is about a 1977 game. I actually think the Eric Lee Smith game is is pretty heavily informed by War Between the States, too, but for yeah. the record, it, it, which is <laughs> flatly a game that works better. Is, is the, the U.S. Civil uh, the Victory Game Civil War is flatly a better game than War Between the States. War Between right. the States is novel because it's bigger, it's three maps, it's got weekly turns and all that, but boy, it's a lot less fun to play than, than either of the other games. Yeah, I don't want to play the Civil War at a weekly... Hmm. That's that, So the thing, here's the thing, and I'll, 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 then we'll get off of War Between the States. In order to activate a unit, you, you have a certain number of command points and you can just activate guys, right? But in order to activate a unit, if you don't have the command points, you have to roll a die, all right? And there's a command rating. So McClellan's command rating is a 1, which means that on a 1, a roll of d6, he will get to actually act that turn, okay? So that means he has a 1 in 6 chance. In order to get him to engage an enemy, you have to you have to move him, which you can spend command points on, and then in the combat phase, you have to roll to activate him to do the combat, which you can't. You have you're dependent on the roll to do it. So that means that somebody like McClellan, is very I mean, you, we, frustratingly sluggish, uh, and I'm, I mean to some extent you want that, but it's too much because of the the weekly turns. It's um, a lot. Yeah, it's just it, a lot. Yeah, hey, he, McClellan's no... got to sit there for for a month before you can, you know, on average, before you can get him to attack somebody. What's the scale of that thing again? Like abstracted strength points again, right? Yeah, if it's abs- uh, no. Well, yes and no. So there's you actually have uh, like divisions, um, and then divisions yeah. will eventually get reduced in strength points. So it, it they are called divisions, but they are really strength points. <laughs> So you'll have like a 10-point division, and then if it takes a hit, it will be reduced to a 9-point division. And then if it takes another hit, it will be reduced to an 8-point division. Uh, and then when yeah. it gets down to 2 or 3, it becomes a brigade. So it looks like actual units, uh, but in, in practice it isn't. It's indistinguishable from strength points, except you got more counters to change out. One of the weak spots of old SPI is it's like they're trying to turn everything they're doing into like World War II. Yes. In their approach, <laughs> basically. That's... You know, and, and and it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to get into it. But yeah, yeah, everything becomes like, like it, it's it's such a gaming touchstone for what they're doing. Yeah. And and th- then it becomes like, and we've talked about that before, it becomes samey, samey. Yeah. You know, in terms of how they design these different games and, you know, they don't think like, hey, wait, is that scale really appropriate? for? Yeah. Does this, ma- does this make sense? And it, it really does it. There's a lot of interesting ideas in that game, by the way. It just doesn't all quite work together in the end. OK, yeah. so let's uh, let's pick up uh, and I'll put this on the uh, on the screen here. This is the sequence of play for U.S. Civil War. We're just going to follow the sequence of play. I mean, I, there, there's also, I will point out, this. there's, you know, scenario setup rules. We're just kind of starting with the 1861 scenario because we want to kind of show off the mechanics and then we can, like, start a serious game if we would like to. Um, there's, in the rules, there's a, a relatively lengthy list of, like, specific hex clarifications. So one of the ones that I'm thinking of is uh, uh, Forts Henry and Donaldson. Um, right. That that hex has its own special rule, for example, uh, and there's actually a bunch of those. Um, <laughs> so each of the like the fortress hexes that are the coastal fortresses, those have their own like special listing and stuff like that. So, uh, so we might have to refer to that. That is a thing that occurs in this game. So okay, um, but generally speaking, the rules, the the land rules especially, are pretty straightforward, and I don't imagine that you're going to have any issues with them. So the first thing we do is we do the reinforcement phase. Um, now, the Union just gets a flat amount of reinforcements, right? Um, and it's basically six in the east, six in the west, and three in the tran- two in the Trans-Mississippi. Uh, but right. there are restrictions on exactly where those can go. So what we're going to do is we're going to... You have to put them in victory point hexes, I think. Let's check that. Objective hexes. All right, so let's talk about that. Uh, the you might see on the map that there are hexes that are highlighted uh, in gray. 
and those are the objective hexes. So I can, for example, put some points in Harper's Ferry. Now, I might not be able to command them with the guy who's there because we have leaders. We have, as you can see, uh, Patterson in, in Harper's Ferry right now, McDowell's right. in D.C., and McClellan is over in Pittsburgh. So right. I need to put, and the, the border between east and west is this dotted line that runs along the Ohio up at the top and then it kind yep. of cuts along the West Virginia border. So basically east is Pennsylvania, West Virgi Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina and South Carolina and then technically even though I think it wasn't considered this historically also Georgia and Florida or well, at least most of Georgia. It, that, uh, calling it the West is is uh, like I, I've fought that playing victory games, you know, which is like six of one half a dozen of the yeah, other. Yeah, it it's, it's a it's, you know, it's, it's really the deep South, and it's more a matter of like, hey, you know, uh, the, the Confederacy's Western armies ended up retreating there, and the Union Western armies ended up marching there. But yeah. that's what's the East, what's the West? Eh, eh, yeah, right. so. Uh, by the way, I'll mention too because we're, we're obviously we're playing on Vassal. The, the the physical game, which is on P five hundred right now, does have two full size mounted maps. That's actually <laughs> as shallow as this sounds. That was one of the reasons why I bought this thing in the first place. I'm like, ooh, two mounted maps. Well, that's fine, that's fancy. We'll just buy that. Um, so, but it turned out that I liked the game. So, all right. So, I'm having a little trouble reading the text on some of the Confederate generals. To be completely honest. Let me see here. The, um, the, the dark blue name of Beauregard is hard for yeah. me to read. Johnston I can read, but he's not in dark uh, black text. Yeah, you kind of have to zoom to 100% to really be able to read yeah. all these cameras. Let me zoom in just a wee bit more here. This feels, where I'm zoomed right now feels unnaturally large on my monitor, so I'm going to go... A down that's a hundred percent right and then yeah. if you go out the next one you're at like uh 63 and that's like yeah. a little too small eh. yeah anyway eh. all right so we're gonna get some strength points here and i i suppose traditionally we could put them in uh just dump them all in washington which we might do but i think i'm gonna put two so i'm just gonna right click and control z control z and then this one over in DC. All right. And we'll talk about command limits when we get to the, the actions. Now we have how, six. How many do you have in DC right now? Uh, at the moment, there's uh, 13 total. I cannot see them. So let me. I bet you I got a. There was a synchronize option. Yeah, you might have to synchronize. That's what, exactly what I have to do. No, I don't want to save the game. All right, let's see here. Yes, there's now 13. There. Okay, where'd, you put, where, where'd you put the other dudes? I put two. I put So I got six in the east. I put right. four in D.C. and two in Harper's Ferry. Sounds good to me. Okay. okay. Now I get six in the West, which have to be split into two pools. Three have to go in, again, in object in supply objective hexes um, in either Ohio or Indiana, and the other three go in Illinois. So Illinois, Indiana, we'll put, uh, let's see, we'll put one in New Albany, two in Cincinnati, and Cairo is where we'll put the three... Yeah, I take that back. Uh, let's. I'll put one in Centralia and two in Cairo. All right. There's no leader in Cairo right now. And then we get two in the Trans Mississippi, which have to go in St. Louis. And so there we go. And, and with the very fine John C. Fremont in command out there. All right. Now, Confederate reinforcement, on the other hand, and that's that's just Union reinforcement. And then we have uh, two special action cards, so let's do that. So I will draw two special action cards. One, two. 
we'll get to we'll get to yours in a moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd like to thank everybody for stopping by, by the way. Um, and then the special. So we'll get to actions and what they represent. And all the special action cards. I'll show the 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 viewers what the special action cards look like. This is all they are. Can, They're just extra can, actions. Can you place or upgrade forts or no? Because it says you could do that. Yes. Uh, so the union can at this point. Right. Um, right. Do I want to do... Well, let's look at that. 10.2.3. Hold on a second. Ten And it looks like the grayed out stuff in the rules is the... Um, yeah, so... Advanced, it, advanced game stuff. You know. Correct. So technically... I can't do it on the first turn because the cost to place a new fort or to upgrade a fort is a special action card. And at the wow. point at which we do that on the first turn, I don't have any special action cards. You ain't got none. Okay. Right. All right. So, so, draw, so you draw your stuff. Yeah. Cool. So, and that's it. Now, um, the Confederate reinforcement section, the Confederate reinforcements vary over the course of the war. The Union just gets those... Uh, 14 points every every turn, and that's that. Um, right. The Confederates, it, and this is a big driver of action in the game, right, is that the Union player needs to win the War of Attrition and needs to drive down that um, Confederate capability to replace their losses by taking the Confederate objective hexes. So, right. um, I need to look at war industry real quick. That is... 14.5, because the first thing, you can upgrade a resource hex. So the Confederate, you'll you'll notice that there are hexes in the south that have little um, numbers in the hexes. Those are the, and they're, I think they're always objective hexes too. Those are the resource hexes, and most of them are worth one, but a lot, but some of them like Chattanooga is worth two, Knoxville is worth two, uh, Atlanta is probably worth two or three. These, they've covered up these uh atlanta's worth two uh they've covered up some of the numbers with these little confederate flags that just that's just there to show ownership but the numbers wow. on the flags are the resource value that for the vassal module purposes the numbers on the flags are the resource value in the hacks so that you can oh, look at the flags and not the numbers in the hexes right uh, so, uh, so if you uh, so i get to upgrade so it basically means you upgrade the flag so let, i i I get to pick one, is what it looks like. So yeah. let's see what I would like to upgrade. And I think... This is random, however. Is there a... Oh, it is? It okay. is, yeah. So where's the table for this, though? Roll two dice. All right. What, what chart am I looking at? Uh, it's on the combat tab that is the random states table. Okay, random states table. Here we go. Uh, 2d6. Okay, so you got a 6. Hey. So pick a resource hex in North Carolina to upgrade. And you should be able to right-click and increase. Let's see here. Well, I can't, but you may have to do that. Let's go to... It just says Union Control or Delete on these flag. That's all I see. I thought maybe you would have a different option. Yeah. Hmm. So the upgrade kit is basically just a new rulebook and player aid card um, right. with the clarifications of the rulebook. You can also download the rule, the updated rulebook from the website. Which, yeah, I have them both, but let me see. Uh, unless you were talking. I'm trying to figure out how to do this, man. You can't... You can't do it on the map. You know, so it's got to be that marker. So I wonder if it's control. 
control shift. What? So I can flip it. It's control, but I can't. I see. All right. Uh, here's how it works. I think I understand it now. Do we say North Carolina? Yeah. That marker goes in one of those hexes. Which marker? The arsenal marker I just dropped in the middle of North Carolina. Let me look at North Ah, okay. So we will put it somewhere. And proximity doesn't matter in this game. If, uh, it's just you're, you're totaling up your build points. And uh, yeah, gonna, pretty much the whole thing is it's um, it's you, you'll add up the build points and divide it by ten, and that's how many actual strength points you end up getting. Right. All right. So it's in Greensboro. Great. But there's okay. like bo certain bonuses too. So like. Uh, Objective hexes that you control in the border states, which the most important of which is Kentucky, I suppose, traditionally. But West Virginia counts, too. And actually, Missouri counts. Um, so objective hexes that you control in those states add each add plus three to this total number before the divide by ten. Okay. So it's kind of you're you're encouraged as the Confederate player to to act in a historical way in invading Kentucky. Right. Okay. So, all right. So it's in Greensboro. Great. Um, so then we go to the. Um, all right. So you're going to add up all those points. Okay. Tell me, there's a player track for it. Well, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Um, it's a fairly recently updated. Ah, see it. Where? Look at Where? the chat. Look at the uh, chat. The Basil chat. Right, I see it. I yep. see it. Where? Where is it? Where is the function? Uh, it's the one up at the top that says display BPs. Uh, all right, display BPs. It's in there twice because I hit it twice. But So basically, uh, Confederate build points 98. You have two more arsenal points. Uh, yeah. Union build point victory points, which is not important at this point. Um, so I have a, so what I do is I take the build points and I add the two arsenal points and that's a hundred. Yeah, I'm and guessing. then minus one, minus ten because you're, it's your maintenance number, which is to maintain your current army. So it's nine strength points. Okay, so yeah, I see the formula. So we got resource hexes, arsenal. Uh, do I have any border state recruits? Not at this time. Not at this time. I don't have any blockade running. And then right. we subtract the maintenance value, which is right. It's, like said, it starts as 10. So right. so you're going to get nine points, one right. of which is, and again, they go in in supply objective hexes, um, wherever you want. Mississippi, and, then and then split, divide. This, yeah, split the other, <clears throat> the remainder as evenly as possible between East and West. All right, so Trans-Mississippi. So what do we got? We got Lion hanging out in Rolla. We got Price hanging out in Springfield. Well, let's be historical. And we're going to... Give Price a reinforcement. And then, so what I end up with is eight. So I had nine, yeah. basically. Yeah. So you'll I, get four in the west, four in the east. Right. So let's see here. So that's another thing in this game, and we'll 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 get to see that early on because stuff happens in the first two turns that will display this mechanic. Um, the leaders arrive and depart and get promoted or get replaced on a schedule. I will show you that schedule if you look at the turn track. Boom! Here you go. So. For example, they're at the end of the turn. Where is this? The leader management phase is the last. Uh, it's the turn before the action cycle. 
although it's done for purposes of turn one, uh, Lion comes out, for example, on turn two because he dies. Um, so everybody, all the leaders are on, you know, Jackson gets killed at, at you know, at, around the turn that Chancellorsville had. It's not around the turn. It's on the turn that Chancellorsville would have occurred on. Lion gets killed on the first turn um, or at the end of the first turn. So you're, again, encouraged to um, use Lion while you have him, right? Because he's, he's the best leader on the board for the Union at this point. Um, and he only you only get him for one turn, but then on the second turn you get some you know some some additional guys. You get uh, Henry Halleck, Curtis, and uh, B- Ambrose Burnside, so they're great. Um, and then I think let's see here. Yeah, Grant's going to come in on turn four. Also, generally speaking, you're not going to get. Um, reinforcements on the in the winter by the way yeah it looks to me yeah i you know the number one complaint obviously everybody bitches about about this game compared to victory game civil wars the leader man it totally yeah it totally is and all right I, you know, and he talks, Mark Simonich talks about this in the designer's notes about why he did it this way. And he acknowledges that this will be the most com- controversial part of the game, and it is. Yeah, I read I read those. I see what he's saying, and I think he didn't accomplish what he intended. And this is what I mean by that. But we'll see how it plays yeah. out, right? But, yeah. but, but, so the biggest problem with Victory Games' solution is that you get these bad leaders stacked up in Nowheresville. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Fine. But you kind of, there's nothing to prevent you from doing the same thing here, except guys get eliminated historically. Well, but there's no negative leader ratings in this game, though. So right. any leader, even a bozo like Fremont or, or, or Halleck or somebody like that, is better right. than not having a leader. Right. There are things that you can do. So let's say uh, you move a, we're well, exactly with the board position that we have right now, but you move an, uh, a force into Louisville. Okay. Right. Louisville might be a bad example. Let's say you move it adjacent to, because it's a navigable river, zone of influence actually doesn't extend across a navigable river. Right. You move adjacent to New Albany here. There's union strength points in the hex. If there's a leader there, they can do a reaction, potentially at least. They can roll to see if they can do a reaction move. So they can move away or they can move to engage or intercept or whatever. Um, You can't do that without a leader. Um, So even bad leaders are useful in this game. There's no leader that actually hurts you, which is the case in the victory game Civil War. Right. That's what I'm saying is so... so that's what I mean, though, is you kind of have these... It, it was like, like an, I think, an extreme and or gate solution. There, there's a way to, to do both. You could have historical leaders, and you can still have, like, negative things about leaders. You, you know, I... I yeah. You know, I, I, I think it was seen too much as an and or proposition. Uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm not going to argue with that. Um, it's a... It is the most disliked feature of this game frankly and and i'm i'm a little surprised and maybe this has happened and i just haven't seen it that there isn't like a fan uh created leader variant to fix that to put in a leader system like the victory or at least somewhat more like the victory game civil war has um because it is the most it's it's the area of this game is and i got issues with the way the victory game civil war handles and i think it's got legit issues but um, I still like it better than the schedule. Yeah, and, so. and while I like Mark's design philosophies generally, I know part of it was so. Yes, it's it, it's resolved some of the the issues. You, you know what I mean? With you can depot leaders in victory games. Got it. Yeah, and agree completely that 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 there, there's something that has to be done regarding that, right? Well, at but the same the, time, that's historical, though. <laughs> Yes, you know? the, it's partially historical. The second th- problem I have with it is it, what he did was, hey, we can just get rid of all these like leader wounded or killed or, or tables, mm-hmm. actions. Yeah. It's the whole like Ludo bits 
clean and elegant thing that completely competes against historic historicity at times yeah good good color so he states that he wants that but it it also it's like well let's get rid of this let's get rid of some extra chromey rolls Mm -hmm. and it's like well you know sometimes it's neat to see if a guy dies or not yeah you know it is it it is that's one thing that um i'm trying to remember how it works because there's a variant set of rules in war between the states that he handles the leaders differently um yeah but the way we played it it handled it played almost identically to the victory game civil war i mean to the to point where the table was the 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 leader casualty table was pretty much the same yeah you know but anyway let, let's drive right. on but yeah it, it's just but, but yeah it's it's a piece of you know it, sometimes you're like hey you know it's that debate about like, hey, so if you script it, right? Mm-hmm. It felt like a tragedy if you're commanding the Army of Northern Virginia that Jackson dies at Chancellorsville, right? Mm-hmm. Because it because it happened at Chancellorsville. But if you script it, well, you're not going to have a Chancellorsville on that date, right? You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, it. In some ways, it's it, it, it yeah it, it it's you know it's 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 the impact it has on your decision making that's more historical rather than you know that piece. But that's my thing is I don't think he did it for historic reasons. I think he did it, and I don't think he did it as much for the depot the depoting reasons. Mm-hmm. More like hey, let's get rid of these tables. Yeah, quick, quick, move move the game, move the game, move the game, and eh, that's why I'm like you know half the times half the stuff I see like Ludo bits advice for design i'm like oh so what you're saying is like take the history and just make it a theme you, you know you know and you know focus on your mechanics more than you do the act the you know well the, i mean i i think that's and i'm not accusing mark of that but i'm just saying it, it, it's that 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 push towards you know keep it clean and elegant where it's important sure you, you sure. know right right so anyway um all right, and so we're going to go... Reinforced, yeah, Polk's got a whole bunch of reinforcements, and I threw everybody at Joe Johnston. So I am done with okay. that. So now I go on to drawing um, some cards. Yeah, I'm you'll sure. draw two special action cards. And there is a uh, Confederate cards uh, button up at the top. And I just go boom, yep. and I go boom. And I see things, and, and what what is what I'm seeing tell me? So when I look at the card. Uh, you'll, it'll either have, e, I think I think this is all of them. There'll be an east, there'll be a west, there'll be a trans Mississippi, there'll be a naval. Uh, Confederate might not have naval, but I do. Um, so sure. all those are are you when you, when we get to the action part of the turn, you can spend these to take extra actions in those theaters. And I think there's a there's a universal one that will let you do it in whatever theater you want as well. Got it. All right, so that's it. I've drawn. So yeah, so that's that's all the cards do. That's they're just. They might as well be be chits. Yeah, they're letting you. They're letting you cheat outside of the initiative system, which is cool. Yeah. So right. So all right. So so next is strategic movement, and this tends to be important for the Confederates, especially. Although I don't know if it's important this turn. Um, so there, there's rail, ocean, river, and road, and there are specific. And oh, the other thing is that the Union player does all their strategic movement, and then the Confederate player does his strategic movement. Got it. So that's a Got it. that is a uh, that that's somewhat advantageous to the Confederate player. Let me put it that way. Okay. So, oh, see. so and strategic. I see, I see that w- there are limits that go down. Obviously. Yes. I so I, I can do uh, twelve SPs, for example, of rail strategic rail now here's the question and i this i'll have to actually look up because so i've got rail units in st louis do i want to go pick those up maybe i do and maybe i don't probably not um with lion because i go i'm going to use lion this turn you know you know i'm going to do that because you know this is the turn i have him and he's a plus two leader on the attack. So the numbers on the leaders, by the way, are attack, defense, and movement. So better leaders, leaders who, like, say, Jackson, with his infamous foot cavalry, um, 
have a better movement rating on them. So better leaders can, and obviously cavalry leaders have, a, uh, which there are cavalry leaders. I don't think we, I know the Union doesn't have any out right now. The Confederate probably player probably does. Uh, they should have a higher leader rating as well. Maybe not. So you get to rail 12 guys, and, and it's very simple, the rule, you know, and I get to rail 7. Very, yes. And it's just, and it's just they have to be contiguous, and that's that's the story. Uh, well, here's here's my question, though, is border state. Um, I don't believe you can use the I'm, – I'm 100% sure you can't use the railroads yet in Kentucky. I don't know about Missouri. I'm less concerned about Kentucky. Well, I'm positive I can't use them in Kentucky. Special rules. Border states. Capturing border state. Recapture. Border state militia. You just have to control them. That's it. So if you look at Missouri, you control certain hexes and you don't. Yep. So I don't control Ironton, so I can't rail anybody to Ironton, for example, until the point at which I control all the objective hexes in the state, at which point I control the whole state. Right. Um, so which is not of particular use in M Missouri specifically. So right now it's pretty obvious. You, what you control is the rail, uh, you know, the rail hexes to Jefferson City, and Arala. Yep. All right. So I will. Okay. So the other question that I have to answer now, and this was something I had to repeatedly look up in the Victory Games Civil War Two, is what is the actual cap on leader command? Um. All right, so one-star leaders can command three strength points. Well, unless they're cavalry, then it's just always one. Two-star leaders can com can control six strength points. And three- and four-star leaders can control 18 strength points. Three and then four stars. You, you can have... The, I think Grant's the only four-star leader in the game, I think. Yeah, and, I, and the combat table tells you when you can add additional leaders to combats, depending on how many guys you have under you. Yes, basically. correct. But it is yeah. capped, so you, you can't just like add every leader in the hex, which is something right. else that happened in War Between the States. All right, so I will... Uh, I can rail to Jefferson City, so I'm going to rail one to Jefferson City. What's the decrease number? Control X... From St. Louis. Um, and I'll rail one from uh, Washington, even though I just put him there, to Harper's Ferry. This Patterson can command them. And I'll take the the guy uh, the guy who's in Philadelphia and rail him to Annapolis. So Lion is at three now, right? He is at. Uh, I don't think I can rail directly to Lion. He is only in at Rawa? two. Yeah, because okay. he's not at. Oh, he is in an objective hex, isn't he? Well, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit. Well, hell, if I can do it that way. Well, I'm trying to. Uh, let me just resync on you. That, that's that's what I'm gonna, just going to do. Yes. I somehow missed that Lion was in an objective hex in Rala, so I'll just rail it directly to him. Otherwise, he was going to go pick pick that pick the two in Jefferson City up. Hmm. So you should see four under Lion now. I'm having a rough time syncing on you. Is what I'm having. There it goes. All right. Server's being a little glitchy tonight, so let me see where we got it. There are also multiple levels of fortification, yep. by the way. Lion at now, I see Lion has four. Right. Yeah, yeah okay. that's correct. Right. Okay. Patterson, Patterson has six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool beans. 
All right, and you see Johnston's got six under him, so Patterson. Oh, let's see. Let's see if that turns into anything. I suspect that it won't. Um, all right, so the next thing, we're, I'm done with strategic movement. You're going to do strategic movement. I don't know if you have any to use. Well, you, you have, have some to use. You have seven rail points, one right. river point, and then strategic road movement Correct. Um, is, how does that work while well, you're doing your rail? So I think consolidation is the order of the day. So I am going to, I don't have much scattered about the south. So the road movement is just, uh, it's only one strength point. You're not limited to the railroad network. Let's see what I have in the Trans Mississippi. A whole lot of nothing, I bet. Nope, nope, nope. So, does the destination need a leader? I don't. Th I'll check, but I don't think so. I think it just needs to be in an objective hex. Okay. Well, time to be risky, I guess. Um, I don't actually think it needs to be in an objective hex. I think it just needs to be on a railroad. I think you're right, but having said that, boy, I don't have much. Delete that guy, and I'll increase. Another thing I'll mention while we're while you're shuffling troops around, I, I am being bold today. Okay, is that this plays? It, it probably doesn't seem like it at this very moment, but this plays relatively quickly. You could play this thing in a day. Oh, it 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 feels like it's moving much quicker than victory game Civil War. I'll say that. So that's that. Especially with the Vassal module, it does all the math for you. Yeah. So, hmm. If I do strategic rail movement, it, it doesn't look like it precludes it. What's the question? Like, could I do rail movement and then road movement? Yeah. Yeah, but road yeah. movement is just one strength point. Right, so, so if you're talking about using on the same strength point rail movement and then road movement, that's unnecessary. You just do it road movement, and they can go anywhere. But they have to stay in the same theater. Right. But what I'm trying to do is move to another theater. Then you could do it that way. Yes. So I, I I am pretty sure that's completely fine. So yeah. So what I'm doing here, as you'll see, is I'm. Moving the, I am moving this guy from Memphis to Madison. Ah, and then I'm a road moving. Delete him. Add him in Springfield there. Okay. Engage in the arms race with you, and uh, if you come attack, make you have a bad attack, basically. Hopefully, hopefully. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it works. It's not going to be a, like a... So you'll see how the combat works, too. Um, 
there's like I'm not sure I'm getting the language accurate here, but there's basically small battles, medium battles, and large battles. And it's the number of strength points total in the whole thing that determines that. Um, the, like the size of the battle. And the bigger battles will tend to be a lot bloodier, for example. But you can use more leaders in them, too. Right. Okay. All right. I am done. Okay. So with my strategic movement, so now we move to the next thingy. Okay, so the next thingy is the leader management phase. So this is where we would bring, and it's already done in this case. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. Bring leaders out, take leaders out, put leaders in, so on and so forth. But we can also do leader transfers here, which we might wish to do. Uh, So this is, um, during this phase, you could transfer any two, one or two star, non-cavalry generals for free. And if you want to you do another one, um, do not have many. No, uh, I don't either. Really, the only loose leader, unless I'm going to pull somebody either out of St. Louis or out of Harper's Ferry, is... Uh, the Patterson and maybe Fremont, or I guess I could transfer McClellan down too if I really wanted to. Um, can, do they have to stay in theater, or can they? No, they can go. In, uh, they can go. So they can go anywhere. Uh, but if you are now, it's that's one and two star leaders. Okay, so if you need right. to like relieve somebody, then that's like a three star general issue. So so there is a cost. And I'm, I'm trying to f- remember exactly what this is. Uh, there's a cost to cashier a leader in command of an army, basically. A three star. Okay. Yeah. But one star and two stars you can move. Yes. All right. So we are going to. Well, you first. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually, that's true. Union player first. All right. We are going to move uh, Fremont down to Cairo. Okay. And that's it. All right. We are going to move Polk to the Trans-Mississippi. And we are going to move Price here, wherever the heck he is, where, where Polk was. Okay. Okay. And that's it. Okay. All right. So now we go into the action cycle, which is obviously where the meat of the game occurs. So what we're going to do is we're each going to roll a d6. All right. So I roll the four. You roll the. So so dice differential is one, and then this is the first action cycle of the turn, and there will generally be up to four action cycles in a turn. So let's make sure we're doing this correctly. Um, The player who rolled the higher number goes first, which will be you. And then the difference between the die rolls determines how many action points that you get for that action phase. Record the differences. The dice differential track. Um, That's it. So, essentially, you get one action point. I have initiative and I get one action point. Right. And with an action point, what can I do? Let's talk about that. (laughs) Let's, Let's talk. Okay. So here, so on page where's for page four, you can you can act for one action point. You can activate a general. There is no uh, action like cost to activate, as you see in either the Victory Game Civil War or in For the People, where you have to have a certain number to activate. It's just one, um, and then but you they can only they can only drag around with them. A number of strength points equal to their ability to command, obviously. Which I think everybody that's important is a two star. Um, so we're going to activate mm-hmm. um, Price. Now, there's special things that happen when the dice differential is either one or four or five. Um, if it's one, which it is, then you get one point in each theater. All right? And then if it's four or five, then basically that's it's the under Richmond rule, which means the Union player has to make an attack in the East. Okay. So, But right now it's just one. 
in one theater, correct? Uh, you're going to go with um, all three. Okay. So we'll start in the West then. Okay. And Price is activated, and he's going to move to Columbus. Okay. And let's see if anything happens to Kentucky as a result of that. I don't think so. Uh, okay, let's look at that because that is... Something could happen. You will invade Kentucky. So, yes, and that flips Kentucky to the Union. Oh, it does? Yeah. All right, then I should but, not do that. Well, oh, okay. so here's the thing. If you don't okay. do that, Kentucky be- joins the Union anyway in the first turn of 1862. Yes, so I am indeed doing that, which is kind of a little early historical. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what Polk did. Yeah. Right, so we're going to move to Columbus and kind of hang there. And then let let us go to the east. To the east. Do I want to get aggro? Yes, I want to get aggro. So we're going to activate um, Johnston Mm -hmm. and take everything he has and attack Patterson. All right. Let's see. That is uh, open hex, but he has got the terrain modifier. All right. So let's do... So Patterson could try to... Uh, react out of the hex, I believe, but I don't think we're actually going to do that. Um, I'll stay and fight that out because we're in a, we're in fortifications. So right. the battle section here. All right. So you're going to have total. We have nine. All right, and I have six. So you may use two leaders, but I think you only have one. All we have is Joe. Yeah. Right. Yep. And then the leaders attack. You're attacking, so the leaders attack rating will apply. So you're going to get a plus one. Right. And then Patterson's defense rating, which is a zero, will also apply to my roll. But I'm rolling on the six column. You're rolling on the on the the nine column. Right. You get a plus two for the fortifications, though. Correct. Uh, but you roll 1d6. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I, I did pick the right time to attack you. To ju- if I was well, if you, have, yeah, if you have yeah, uh, if you have nine strength points, this is a good time to do it. All right, so <laughs> let, we both roll, right? Okay, yes. so I'll roll 2d6. Ooh, that's good. I got a 10. That's probably good. I got a one. I got a one. So Plus I see my three. luck from the from the victory game Civil War is holding steady. Um, so I have done zero damage to you, and you with a ten are going to do two damage to me. So we're going to reduce. Let me grab these. I didn't add my two. Hold on. I am going to actually uh, do one hit to you. Got it. All right. So I delete a strength point. Decrease. All right. And then Union will lose two. And then am I demoralized? Pretty sure I am. Okay, so the loser of the battle is which is the side that lost the most. Uh, Let me double check that that's actually the case. Hold on. Yeah, the side that took the most losses, got it, is the side that loses. So I am demoralized. So let's should be able to right click on here and mark as demoralized, and then Patterson will retreat. see how far I have to retreat. 
It is uh, a defender retreat is two hexes, an attacker retreat is one. So if you had bounced somehow, which could have happened, I guess, yeah, yeah. Um, then you would have uh, had to retreat one hex. I'm going to have to retreat two. So we'll retreat back up to Chambersburg. Not, not with that guy. All and right, then I so. think the fortification goes away when you enter the hex, I believe. All right. We haven't talked movement points, but I'm assuming... Um, so I moved through Winchester, just so you know. You know, I went into uh, Winchester and then attacked Harper's Ferry. Uh, the fortifications destroyed, or do they stay put? I'm pretty sure they go away. Okay. And here we are in Harper's Ferry. Well, that's good news. It's an objective. That's going to be an extra... Yep. yep. All right. So that's it for the east um patterson is going to be you know excoriated in congress i'm sure and you know probably hung <laughs> at this stage of the war and uh, as a traitor and uh let's see trans mississippi i don't think we are going to advance from springfield i think i'm gonna let lion come at me Okay. And so I am going to decline doing anything there. That's okay. that. Give me one second here. I dropped something. Another mechanical thing I prefer mm -hmm. um, is with leader management, you're, you don't have the constant placement of the leaders in the impulse phase. You know? So... You know, so I like that. That that in itself speeds up the game. You know what I mean? You're not saying like, "Hey, uh, this is a good time for me to place this guy here, this guy there." Yeah. You know that that's something. So that's a thing from the from victory games. Like if they had done this in a non scripted way, right? There are a lot of other things like that that would have sped up the game. Yeah. Give me one second. I gotta fix something. I'm gonna mute myself. Right. You go right ahead. It's already been an hour. Wow. Oh, I'm a, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. You're busy destroying things in your... Yeah, I dropped Ooh. a battery and it uh, rolled under the brand new piece of furniture that was just constructed this afternoon. So, I mean, I did these tiny little movements, so it doesn't matter, but I'm okay. assuming that, that the... Um, when you're talking about movement, it's... It, like, I, I kind of went all victory games there and said four, like your movement's four, but I have no idea. It's the number on the counter. It's that oh, last leader. factor on the counter. Okay, right, because you're moving with a leader. Understood. Yeah. So, right. um, and then so each like strength points that are alone in a hex are considered to have an inherent uh, zero zero three leader with them for this purpose. Got it. Okay. But cool. the activation is like by strength point, right? Because you don't have a leader there, you can activate a leader for a, for an action point, or you can activate. Um, a strength point for an act for an action point. Right, right. So it's far more efficient to do it with a leader, even a bozo like Fremont, for example, who you'll notice is a three movement. Also, huh? the the red marker means that he's cautious. Uh, I'm not sure I remember what that means. Is McClellan cautious too? I bet he is. And believe it or not, no. No. All right. So, uh, did you do your action in the Trans Mississippi? I, yes, which was no action. Okay, that's fine. All right, and you you may do that. That is fine. Uh, but let's actually look at the uh, to see if you want to do something else. So you can move. You can naval transport doesn't apply. 
You can recover from demoralization. Nope. Um, you can reposition any two friendly one or two star generals on the map. So you could do that yep. in the action phase. Just costs you an action point. You can what entrench. About? This might, maybe you want to do this. Place an entrenchment marker in any space containing a friendly militia or XP SP that is located in a friendly controlled state. You can't oh. do that in Springfield because that is not a friendly controlled state. Nope. So I can't do that. You can also uh, turn them into SP. So you can... Is there a track for that? There should be a track for this. Um... One moment. Yeah. So, if you're not going to use it, what you end up doing is there's a training marker on that status track. You're going to advance that by one. For every Where's... seven of those, I just I moved it up for you. Okay. For every seven of those, it turns into a strength point. That sounds good to me. All so, right. All right. So. Well... Let's, Over to you. Let's do our action. In, so I'm going to also get um, one, 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 one point yeah. in each theater. So we will take our four strength points under Patterson, and we will... Do, 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 do we actually want to do that? Poor Patterson. Yeah, I put him in a bad way. He's in a bad way right now. Yeah, but he's still got four strength points, which isn't nothing. Right. Um, but if he ends up in another combat and he's demoralized, then he's that's like a minus two. So we don't want that. So we're gonna we're gonna undemoralize him. That's our okay. action in the east, which is unfortunate because I had something else, something different I wanted to do. All right, in the west, let's look at the terrain effects here. Navigable rivers. So the navigable rivers are the Mississippi and the Ohio, okay? Right. So the, the, the big rivers that run down the middle of the map with the dots in the middle, those are the navigable rivers. And you'll notice that the Ohio stops being navigable at Pittsburgh. Correct. All right, so it costs one extra movement point to cross. What do you got there in Columbus, Kentucky? Oh, let's, let's cross it with John C. Fremont. We'll cross right here. Um, I want to leave a point behind. I'll leave two points behind. You got what, three? Fremont is a bum. While you're doing that, I'm going to see what happens, what cautious leaders do. Not a lot to work with. Um, generals, generals with their MA and a red square box are cautious. They mm -hmm. require an expenditure of at least two action points. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, or I a guess... special action card if they wish to attack or move into a ZOI during their activation. All right. In that case, uh, what we are going to do is... So, Fremont can't move then, actually. So, we will take the one point in the west and use it to... Mm. Really wanted to do it in rail movement. Um, we will uh, take that point in Centralia and move it to St. Louis. Okay, that's our one in the in the in the west, and then in the Trans Mississippi, uh, Lion is going to go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then oh, hmm. that's a good question. I, I, I have to sink on you again. God. Well, that's okay because are we doing? Yeah, so combat is in the hex combat. So I actually needed one more to... All 
um, to get there. You have the ability... Do I have a Force March option here? Hold on. Oh my god. It is just not... Nope. Okay. So, Polk may attempt a reaction move. Hold on a second. I can't, um... We're having, of course, technical difficulties. Let me let me do a speed test. I'm sure I'm fine. I'm sure it's just the stupid Vassal server. Probably, yeah. I actually got thrown off the uh, thrown off the internet earlier. Yeah, so let me um if you could I don't know, I can't sync on you. So try to sync on you. Let's see what happens. I'm going to get out. Oh, don't do that yet. Hold on. I'm too late. You already did. Poop. I just See, I didn't save the game. Oh, crap. So, we both bailed on it, is what that means. Well, I think that's our learning. <laughs> so I guess. Well, we've been at this for about an hour. Uh, that is the basic structure of the game, though. Uh, I mean, there's there's a bunch of subtleties, uh, certainly with all the individual... Um, let me pull this back up, so at least we have something to look at. Um, that's basically well, I... the structure of the game, right? We still have that uh, dice differential based uh, pulse pacing mechanism uh, that, right. that I think everybody really likes. For from yeah. uh, well, it's it's from the, I mean everybody knows it from the U.S. Civil War, but a similar mechanism was in place with um, with the uh, uh, with uh, war between the states as well. Where you'd actually have yeah, a pool great mechanism. of yeah, you'd have a pool of chits to pick from, and then uh, the pool of the like the numbers on the chits would evolve over the course of the game. So like in winter turns, you tend to like lose a bunch of chits out of the pool with higher numbers. So you you and those numbers on the chits are a number of action points that you can take. Um, and then whoever gets more actions has the initiative for the turn. And then you all, you you do all your stuff, and then the other side does all their stuff. So you spend all your points, roll all, uh, for all the guys who don't have points to spend, which is a lot, right. especially in the early game, which is one of the reasons why I think it, it kind of breaks down. Um, because you'll end up with, like, okay, I got three points for the Union, but I got, like, 25 leaders on the map that need to do stuff, right? Um, well, I... I I'm actually interested in continuing what, like, because it'd be very easy to recreate what we, where we were. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, that, it that, would that be. Hard. But actually, now that we've seen, uh, seen the basic mechanic, let's let's take a look at the sequence of play to just kind of talk through stuff that we didn't get to, which is very little actually. Um, the end phase is when you like to, would determine. Oh, okay, the Union controls Kentucky now. Um, right. You the rally. I think you could attempt to remove disorganized units. You would have had. So there's two kinds of reaction movement. This is kind of what I was getting at. There's inner. There's so each unit with a general has a zone of influence that extends into the adjacent hexes. It right. does not extend across impassable hex sides or unbridged navigable rivers. It Right. Okay. So if somebody moves into an adjacent hex that's in your zone of influence, and you have a general there, you can attempt to intercept them. There is defensive uh, reaction movement called ab avoiding battle, but that doesn't happen until uh, the enemy force moves into your hex. Right. So if we, we right. go to Lion here, and he's right next to Price... Uh, Price does not get, if we end like this, Price does not, I mean, he can get a reaction if he wants to intercept, if he wants the battle, um, in which case there's the battle, uh, but if he doesn't want to do, and there's a role that you have to make, so. Not Price, it would have been Polk. It would, well, it would have been Polk, that's true. Right, uh, what I would have done, what, well, what I would have done is just let you come and attack me. I, I had the, you know, I had the advantage of numbers and a decent leader. 
So my plan was to stay put and let you come attack. Yeah, so Polk's got a plus one on the defense, but Lion has a plus two on the attack. Right. Um, right. So, and I think we were even in numbers-wise, actually. I have four, and I think you have three. I Lion actually has... think I had four, but I can only lead three because Lion right. is only a one-star general. Correct. So, but you'll see on the combat table that... Um. Yeah, you're probably gonna. I mean, where, where it becomes decisive, where a, a number advantage becomes decisive, is if you're on one table and the other guy is on the next lower table, <laughs> right? Right. So if you have say 13 strength points and I have four, then that's a big difference, right? Yeah. Um, I the reason I would have fought it out is simply this: I've got a plus one on the defense. Yeah. Yes, you do have a plus two on the attack. Yeah. But I don't want to give up Springfield. Oh, well, sure. Why, why would you want to? Right. You are so right to not. Right. So I would have said, eh, you know, Lion's better, but not that much better. Let's 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 take our chances. Well, you know? I'd want, if I were playing the, there's really very little else that you have to do with stuff, with assets in the Trans-Mississippi at the beginning of the game as the Confederates. Um, I would absolutely have done the, exactly the same thing. Say bring it because you want to make the Union fight for it. Right. Right. All right, so uh, if we would it, like to play this, if we, we just restart, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'd be happy to play either the Union or the Confederates. You have a sense of how the game works now, and we have a basis to to get into the, the, the subtleties cool. of the game. Um, we can totally start that next week if we want to. Let's let's make that happen. All right, so. and Pat and I will discuss the schedule for that. I think we're going to try and shoot for an earlier time slot than 5 p.m. That was just kind of like an arbitrary choice, and it turned out to be a terrible arbitrary choice because the schedule didn't work out for either of us for the last two weeks. Uh, but at least this time we got uh, some a, a, at least one turn of a, one action cycle, I should say. Now, the other thing is that's not the end of the turn, right? That's right, the end right. of the action cycle. So then we go to action cycle two, or part two right. of the action cycle. We just keep going until it ends, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I think you have, I think there's only three stages of the action cycle in winter, I believe. I could be misremembering that, but um, but that's something that we can do. So I think uh, I will uh, say to everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm glad that we actually got to do this. Things were kind of dicey for me today because I had off off camera stuff happening. Um, so I would like to encourage everyone to stay uh, tuned to the schedule, and we'll try and shoot for uh, next week at sometime slightly earlier in the afternoon. Uh, and then I will be online live tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern with the counter clipping stream. Um, so again, I would like to thank everybody for watching, and have a great day. Good night, everyone.